Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship here at St. Philip Deacon. It's good to have you all here. A special welcome, as always, to anyone worshiping with us today for the first time. If this is your first time worshiping with us, please know we've been expecting you and we're delighted by your presence. I also want to be sure to welcome those of you joining us uh, digitally this morning. As always, you can find what you need for worship at spdlc.org slash live stream. Uh, among the things you'll find there is our Partners of the Gospel. I hope you found that online. And for those of you here in the sanctuary, I hope you picked one of these up on your way in. I'll lift up just a couple of things from the cover of it. Um, there are all kinds of ways you can learn and grow and serve uh, through these summer months. But uh, in the upper right-hand corner of the right column on the cover, uh, there's a note about uh, a concert or a Vesper service this Wednesday with the Bach Roots Festival. Um, group uh, 7.30 on Wednesday the 21st. Right below that, a reminder about our Wednesday uh, organ recitals at uh, 12.15 during July, and thanks to Craig Winchettel, our organist and bell choir director, for putting those together. He will kick that off on July 5th, so please join us for those. Those uh, have always proven to be a really fun opportunity to celebrate this amazing instrument with some wonderful um, instrumental lists. Our amazing instrument with a wonderful instrumentalists. Uh, so thanks again to Craig for, for arranging that. I'll leave the rest to your reading. Uh, happy Father's Day to all of you for whom that applies. And uh, again, we are so glad that you are all here. Welcome, welcome, welcome to each and every one of you. I'm gonna invite you now to please stand as in silence we prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts, that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Psalms. 
Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the ninth and tenth chapters. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, 
cast out the demons. You received without payment. Give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, I bring you grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So as always this morning, we have a couple of readings, and I'd like to just touch briefly on each of them, uh, beginning with Psalm 100. Uh, psalm 100 is a reasonably well-known psalm, uh, all about entering into God's courts with praise and thanksgiving. Um, it's the basis of Old 100th. Craig played an improvisation on that famous hymn. Um, I'll, it's not long. Let me just read it for you. Uh, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. As soon as I saw that this was the appointed psalm for today, uh, and this always happens when I think of Psalm 100, I immediately went to a very specific moment in my life, which happened to be my wedding day. Amy, my wife, is over there. She, I'm sure, remembers the same thing. I hope she do, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and I think of it, because we, it was a beautiful service, we had lots of lovely readings, wonderful music, uh, but we began the service with someone reading Psalm 100 from the back of the sanctuary, again, as a reminder that we're entering into God's house with thanksgiving and praise. So I can never think of or hear that psalm without thinking of that really critical and important moment of transition in my life, which got me thinking then of other moments of transition, and I, I started thinking actually about my beginning here at St. Philip the Deacon 16 years ago now and my first sermon, which strangely enough, I still remember. Um, I can't remember what I preached about a month ago, but I remember that first ser sermon I preached here, which was really just a way for me to introduce myself to you all and begin to get to know you. And I framed it up by talking about all of the churches I had been part of, not always a pastor at, through my life. So a, a small Lutheran church in Chicago, then in Northfield when I was at St. Olaf, then in Minneapolis, then in Los Angeles, then in um, 
South Bend, Indiana, and then back in, in Minneapolis. And I, <laughs> I learned an important lesson about preaching with that sermon, because after sort of recounting the lessons I'd learned at those churches, what I attempted to do was to sort of, with all of you, imagine someday in the future, far in the future, when I would be reflecting back now on my tenure here at St. Philip Deacon, and I sort of painted a picture of me sit, having one of my grandchildren sitting on my lap, sharing with them all that we had accomplished together with God's help. Uh, the lesson I learned is you have to be very careful what you say and how you say it, because after that sermon, about half the congregation said to one another after worship, he looks kind of young to have a grandchild, don't you think? <laughs> and just to be clear, we still do not have any grandchildren. Uh, our oldest, Luke, is actually engaged to be married next April, um, so I'll keep you posted on that. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, again, I I'm thinking of transitions, and then that got me thinking of another transition Amy and I are moving through right now, or just moved through. Our youngest, Andrew, just graduated from high school. So that means that we're now moving away from the sort of primary school time of our life, elementary school, middle school, and high school, into the next chapter of our life. And as we make that transition, uh, I just want to say, I want to say something very simple, um, but very important. I think in our lives, we very frequently um, forget or don't name or don't pay close enough attention to the gifts, to the blessings in our lives. Would you agree with that? Can I get an amen to that? And as Andrew has graduated, we've gotten lots of people coming up to us and saying, oh, you guys were such great parents, and I hope we have been adequate parents. Uh, if we have, it's thanks to my wife, mostly, Amy. But uh, I want to say this very clearly. Uh, our children would not be who they are today without all of you, truly. And so I was sitting over here thinking, okay, Tim, hold it together. <laughs> One of the things they've all learned is to see their dad do this with some frequency. But I, I don't want to over-sentimentalize it, but you've all heard that, you know, the, the line, it takes a village. And I think my wife would agree with me. Um, the gift of this community to our family has been immeasurable and profound. And our children would not be who they are today absent this wonderful, amazing, generous, incredible community of faith, which is all of you. So basically, I just want to say, as we make this transition, thank you. Thank you for helping to make my family who they are and make my children who they are. Um, I, as an aside to that, by the way, some of you know I've been doing a, a weekly podcast uh, ever since the start of, of the pandemic. Uh, episode 248, which was just a couple of weeks ago, um, I discuss sort of a different transition, my transition from a different world professionally into the world of ministry. And I talk in that moment, and you can find it if you want to hear more about it, about how Amy and I really struggled with this transition to ministry and worried how, how that transition, not St. Philip Deacon, this was before St. Philip Deacon, but how the transition to ministry would negatively impact our children. Boy, we sat with that a long time. I don't know if any of you know the children of, of pastors, but sometimes it doesn't go so well. Um, <laughs> Anyway, I think you can check in with my kids after worship. I think they would agree that actually, far from it being a negative, it has been an incredible gift. Um, and again, this place has a lot to do with that. Which brings me to the second point, which is sort of the same point in a different key. The second gospel, or the second reading, the gospel for today is all about Jesus calling and then sending his disciples, right? He calls them together, and he says, go out and share the good news, proclaim the kingdom of God. Heal the sick, raise the dead, um, help those who are, cleanse those with leprosy, and so forth. 2,000 years later, we are inheritors of that same, that same call. We are called by Jesus and then sent back out to proclaim the kingdom of God, to spread the good news, to share the good news. And my hunch is, and there's nothing wrong with this, it's accurate and true to a point, but my hunch is when we think about that, and here we talk about it in terms of your gifts make a difference, uh, I think we tend to think, oh yeah, we share the good news and we, we, we proclaim the kingdom of God by going out from this place 
and you know, giving a drink to those who are thirsty, or feeding the hungry, or clothing the naked, or um, uh, helping the least and the, lost be and the left behind, or remembering those who are forgotten at important moments in the year like Thanksgiving or Christmas. All of that is true. And folks, this congregation does amazing things to support the world around us, to support our community, and I give thanks for that. But, and this is related to that first point, it's also true that part of the way we proclaim the kingdom of God and share the good news is precisely by, as Psalm 100 reminds us, entering into this court, into this sanctuary, and bowing before our God and being drawn, as a result of that, closer to one another and to God by becoming a family here, by being drawn into community. So again, back to that point about we sometimes forget the blessings God has given us. I would encourage us all today to pause and reflect on the incredible gift of this community. And by the way, those of you who are joining us online, one of the growing edges for us uh, at St. Philip Deacon, probably like every church, is to, to figure out in the years ahead how to include you uh, more fully in that community. Many of you are here periodically and then watch online with some frequency. Some of you are far, far away from us geographically throughout the year and so can't be here. Uh, some of you are shut in. So if you have ideas about how we can help draw you more fully into that community, uh, please let us know. So again, I, I would encourage us to reflect on that. If you've been here a long time, maybe just pause today to think about the incredible people you've gotten to know here, the relationships you've developed, and pause to give thanks for them. Uh, if you're newer to St. Philip Deacon, I promise you, uh, you will enter into community more fully in the years ahead. And if you have children, young children, uh, or know people who are part of this community who might want to become part of it, um, my, my hope for each of them, for the parents and the children, is that like Amy and me, 10 or 15 years from now, you will be able to look back and say, my heavens, what an amazing gift this, this place has been to my children and my family. And again, I, you have my commitment. I will let you know when there's any news on the grandchild front. <laughs> let us pray, would you? Loving God, we give you thanks for this incredible community of faith. We give you thanks for drawing us together as your people and then sending us out to share the love of your kingdom. We give thanks for all of the ways we support those in need. But we also give thanks for the community we share. Help us never to take that gift for granted and always to reinforce it and to celebrate it through your love. And all this we pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. We confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. For the church here and around the world, we pray. Seek out disciples and send them out with authority to proclaim good news, bring healing where there is pain, and counter the forces of evil. Lord, in your mercy. For the earth and all its creatures, we pray. Equip farmers, farm workers, and all who labor on the land to produce a harvest, nourish crops with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine, restore lands ruined by pollution or misuse. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who govern, we pray. Empower those who seek peaceful solutions to conflict and embolden those who advocate for all who are oppressed. Work through systems of government to establish justice throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. For those who suffer, we pray. Accompany those who feel helpless, alone, or abandoned. Embrace any who long for successful treatment for mental illness or freedom from addiction. Heal those who are sick, especially John, George, Jim, Tony, Bruce, Bill, Lois, Amy, Peggy, Julie, and these others we lift to your tender care in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For fathers and all who give fathering care, we pray. Console all who long to be fathers, children estranged from their fathers, anyone grieving the death of a father, and fathers who have lost a child. Draw near to all for whom this day stirs up difficult emotions. Lord, in your mercy. For all the saints, we give thanks. Receive into your eternal care all those who have died and fill us with the hope that does not disappoint. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now may the God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord.